Hey everyone, this is Wild and Wooly Gaming coming at you from the, uh, the middle of nowhere, the center of everywhere. And the reason for my video today is because I have some new data for you guys. Uh, it's about fuel efficiency and the different octanes that you can get from the pump. So the ones I used were 87, 89, and 93. And really my, 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 um, my goal was to explore how much different how much uh, more fuel efficiency you can get, which I thought personally, the higher you get, especially with a turbocharged vehicle, like my own 2017 Hyundai Elantra Sport with the 1.6 liter TGDI engine, I felt like I'd be getting more fuel efficiency up to the 93 um, and lower, towards the lower end of the octane rating. Um, it, so my, my goal was really to test fuel efficiency because uh, I can actually quantify those numbers. Um, power, which I do not have a dyno to use, so I couldn't really quantify those numbers. It's more of a feel, and I want you guys to report on what you guys feel when you have you know, different octanes in your, uh, your turbocharged vehicles especially, or your higher compression vehicles, and, um, and the, the throttle response, because that's something in my car that's been kind of shaky. So those are kind of like the three things I really wanted to go over, and I'll go over those real quick. Um, but first, I'll go over the actual quantifiable data that I do have for the fuel efficiency. So watch this. So as you can see here, my uh, handwriting is very sloppy, but I do have the 87, the 89, and the 93 octane uh, fuels. And I went over a whole host of things. I, I even you know took gas price, total fuel range that you can expect, and you know uh, freaking the, the average temperature outside that it was, the average high. Uh, during my testing uh, because I have such a short commute that a difference of 20 degrees outside could actually mean the difference of um, you know hitting operating temperature uh, a minute sooner or you know a half minute sooner which could actually throw off my fuel efficiency data notes so again just keep that in mind either way let's get to the data so I have 87 octane I was getting 31 point or 30 point one miles per gallon by the end of the test that was when I was done doing the test and I was starting to fill up with the other type of fuel. So 30.1, it doesn't seem uh, high because it's not, but I got 31.4, which is a 4.32% difference out of the 89 octane. So just a little bit more octane, but I was getting much, much better fuel efficiency. It was awesome. Um, the 30.9 mile per gallon rating goes to the 93 octane. Uh, which is the the full premium, which is the most expensive, and it's only about two and two thirds of a percent, which is w more or less within the margin of error. Uh, one could argue that, being that this is over, this is about a mile and a gallon, you know, 1.3 miles per gallon extra. You're really getting um, that's kind of above what you might expect out of uh, the margin of error, especially if I'm driving the same in all of my tests. So. What does this mean to you? People mostly want to know how much fuel am I getting, uh, how much range am I getting for the money? So the gas price around me for, for regular gas is 2.45 cents per gallon. It's $2.67 per gallon for the 89 and $2.97 a gallon for the 93, which is clearly the most expensive. It's almost uh, 30 cents more per gallon between these two and 50 cents more than this. Um, and it's almost $3 by itself. So for this, uh, obviously, I'm using this as the baseline, so it's you. How can you improve upon uh, this? How can this be, you know, above the 2.45? Anyways, I'm kind of confusing myself here. The 2.67 or the uh, $2.67 gas, so the 89 gas, is about 9% more expensive per gallon than the 87, but it has a 4.32%, so about a four and a third percent increase in fuel efficiency over this. So you're really more or less making about half the difference back in terms of fuel efficiency um, because you're getting back about what? I have a 14 gallon fuel tank. You're getting back over uh, 13 uh, gallon miles, you know, over, over the life of your car. Actually, you're getting back about 18.2 miles um, over that 14 gallons. So that's a, a pretty decent amount. Whereas this, it's 21.22% more expensive than the regular, which is uh, completely insane to me. I didn't expect, I, I never really did the math in my head, but it's, it's a lot, especially for only getting two and two thirds of a gallon or of a mile per gallon difference. It's not much. Um, and that's even 
for all like for all the testing I've done, that might be within the um, that might just be an error. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, again, tell me your results. But the regular costs thirty four point uh, three uh, dollars uh, for a full tank in my car, whereas this is only three dollars eight cents more, and this is seven dollars twenty eight cents more, um, which is equivalent to almost three three full gallons of this so that's that's crazy uh, this is about one and a half extra gallons different but you're again you're making it back at least in half and I'll go over it a little bit more but um, you do make it up in power gain as well so with this um, you do have I, I did notice the typical range that my car was kind of uh, meandering in while I was driving it. I typically saw myself between 29 and a half and 30 and a half uh, fuel efficiency or miles per gallon while I was driving during the, the entirety of the test. For this, I saw uh, around 30 to 31 and a half, and this I saw 30 and a half to 31.5. Just wanted to include that because obviously these were at the end of my test, but this is what I typically saw while I was driving. Um, the best fuel efficiency I'd gotten after uh, 75 miles of driving was 30.8 uh, 30 miles per gallon. This was 30 and a, uh, one and a half as well as this. Um, one, again, important thing to note, I think, was that the temperature was about 16 degrees warmer uh, during this test on average than it was on these tests. Um, so that does kind of make my my engine uh, warm up quicker and because a cold engine tends to use a little bit more fuel or at least mine does it's just something i wanted to um, note so this might actually be lower or higher um, if it was the um, same temperature anyways so getting to the power so in regards to the power of the vehicle um, I did notice some much more drastic changes than i did on the numbers the actual quantifiable numbers and that I didn't really expect so much. I expected more of a difference in that than I would in the power, you know, because initially when I started driving my car, I was using regular, then I switched to 93, and now I'm gonna probably be switching to 89, and I'll tell you why. The 93 felt great. Um, that's why I'd used for the majority of my, my car's life. My car's 3,000 plus miles at this point, and I, um, I always felt like it gave me the most out of my car. Felt like I was getting the full 201 horsepower, um, or at least the, the limit of 201 horsepower. Felt like I was getting my full not 195 foot-pounds of torque. I felt like I was really getting the whole kit and caboodle. Um, and I was. Throttle response is great. Uh, I'd give that about a nine, uh, with, or about an eight and a half or a nine with the premium. Uh, the engine, the power was great. It was about, uh, again, a nine, and uh, it just felt like it handled and responded much better. Whereas the 89 was actually very, very close. And that took me by surprise. I mean, I felt like if there was a loss in power, it was negligible. The only difference that I really noticed in the power was that it kind of felt like the, the, um, the power band was a little bit lower on the 89 for whatever reason. It felt like I was getting uh, a little bit less power or um, I felt like I was getting about the same power but over a shorter duration of time. The throttle response was a little bit um, reduced. It was noticeable to me, but it was still pretty good. Uh, and again, my car uses, it recommends 87 octane gas, but I had heard reports, I had heard people saying 89 or, or really 91 or 93, I mean to say, were the way to go because they give you an extra five horsepower. They give you better fuel efficiency because it burns slower, which is clearly not too much the case. Better fuel efficiency would amount to something uh, more tangible like two and a half or three miles per gallon rather than one and a third miles per gallon or even just 0 0.8. Um, so it's not really all too much of a benefit with that. Now getting to the 87, it was way different. I felt like it was a different car. It felt like my car was still being broken in. Uh, I was surprised. So the throttle, you might've seen it in my other video, uh, my most recent video uh, before this, but the throttle felt like it was very jumpy very very jumpy it was almost as though it couldn't catch itself um it it just wants to keep like you know go and stop go and stop go stop even if i had my foot applied firmly to the to the uh, pedal um and it's with the dct um it the power didn't feel like it was all there it felt like i was losing between five and ten not not ten percent but 
Actually, maybe uh, about 10% of my power. I know it's not realistic because it's only a difference of two octane between that and the 89, but it felt like that um, for whatever reason. Uh, and it just, it was very disconcerting. The, the engine response and everything was not there. And again, it felt like, you know, if, if I were blindfolded and put into the same exact car, and obviously, you know, if I hadn't known it was the same exact car somehow, let's say if they covered up the interior outside of the uh, driver's seat, and they used one car with the 87, one car with the 93, especially, I would have felt they were, like they were totally different cars. I would have thought that it might be like uh, this car versus like uh, and uh, last gen Civic. Not that I've driven a last gen Civic SI, but you know what I mean? It, it felt like that. Um, it's just very strange. So tell me what you guys think. You know, I want to know what sort of results you guys have gotten in your personal lives. Uh, I couldn't really run a dyno test to like see exactly what sort of power I was losing, but you know, I'm sure it'd be interesting. I'm sure other people have. So tell me, um, you know, what's your experience with kind of having a car that recommends 87 octane gas uh, is likely a turbo such as my own and you use 89 or more. You know, I want to know what you guys kind of deal with because you know, this, the, these data points are just for my car and they're just over a few hundred miles, but I'm sure other people have vastly different experiences for me. Some people probably say that 87 is the best and it gives you the best, you know, performance. So tell me what you guys think. Um, also, uh, you know, tell me what you guys think about this idea. I want to kind of have a general knowledge forum in a way uh, and make videos about it because I have a lot of useless information in my head, whether it's about World War II, uh, whey protein, food, whatever. I love it. I love sharing my knowledge and my stupid voice with you guys. So tell me what you think. Uh, either way, Thanks so much for watching my video, guys. I actually just got done trying to make this a shorter video. My previous cut of this was like 20 minutes, so be thankful. Anyways, again, thanks so much. Comment, like, subscribe. Please subscribe. And, um, you know, I hope you have a wild and woolly day. And check it out next month. I'll probably be doing a review on a Camaro SS. So stay tuned because I am excited. See you guys later. And, uh, again, stay wild and woolly, guys.